persecuted Nigerian atheist prisoner adopted by U.S. congressmen. In a significant development, U.S. Congressman Jamie Raskin has taken up the case of Nigerian atheist Mubarak Bala, who has been sentenced to 24 years in prison for allegedly assaulting the Prophet Muhammad. Congressman Raskin, through the Lantos Commission's Defending Freedom Project, aims to bring attention to Bala's unjust imprisonment and advocate for his release. Bala's case highlights the dangers of theocracy and the suppression of free expression and thought. Congressman Raskin emphasized the urgent need to defend these fundamental human rights globally and called on Nigerian President Muhammad, Muhammadu Buhari to issue a pardon for Bala. The Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission, alongside other organizations such as Freedom Now and the European Parliament, have also rallied behind Bala's case, demanding accountability and urging the repeal of blasphemy laws in Nigeria. Mubarak Bala, the former president of the Humanist Association of Nigeria, continues to appeal his conviction while human rights organizations work tirelessly to secure his freedom. Bala's sponsorship by prominent politicians and institutions worldwide underscores the urgent need for the protection of free expression and the freedom of belief for atheists. So this is amazing because we have talked about like for Iranian political prisoners, for example, it's kind of become popular over the past several months that politicians will adopt a political prisoner and then that, um, a uh, prisoner will have a politician outside their own country who is monitoring their case, speaking to the media on behalf of their case, advocating for them within their own governments and using um, their own available um, processes of international leverage to try to make sure that this person is well cared for, that they're treated well in prison, or best case scenario, freed, exonerated, unconditionally released. Uh, and... <clears throat> So this is a really positive development because last year, Mubarak Bala was sentenced to 24 years in prison for insulting the Prophet Muhammad. And what he did when he insulted the Prophet Muhammad, allegedly, is he was actually in the post that this whole, this, this, is, this all started by, it was a Facebook post. And he was really having a criticism of terrorism and it was a criticism of like violence in his community and people that were promoting violence in his community, and religious preachers that were promoting those really dangerous attitudes. And he was making a comparison between those local preachers and the Prophet Muhammad, and people blew it out of proportion. Lawyers filed petitions against him, saying that this man needs to be arrested before Muslims go attack him. And if the Muslims attack him, then that's a threat to peace and stability. So therefore, we're essentially going to blame the victim, and we're going to go throw him in jail. And he was held illegally in jail for like, what, two years, two and a half years until he finally received his sentence. And the sentence shocked everyone involved with the case because he had been led to believe that if he just says that he's guilty, that they'll stop harassing his family, that they'll let him go because of he'd already been serving like two over two years behind bars. So they were like, okay, maybe there'd be a suspended sentence, all this stuff. No, they threw the book at him on every single minute detail of anything that could even remotely be considered a crime and anything that he did. And they gave him that sentence of all those little beats, pieces consecutively, a consecutive sentence, which added up to 24 years. So the whole situation is, you know, just a complete miscarriage of justice. So many elements about how he his case was treated as completely illegal under Nigerian law. He's been abused in custody, denied medical treatment, forced to pray Islamically, and threatened. Him and his family have been threatened while he's been in custody. And now he's been charged and blah, blah, blah. So this is really positive because this keeps the case of Bala in the news. It keeps it relevant. It keeps people talking about it. It spreads awareness. And also Jamie Raskin, like shouts out to Jamie Raskin. Where, where was a comment from D she's saying, I adore Jamie Raskin. Exactly. Jamie Raskin. I have never fangirled for a, a U.S. Congressman before. But I am a Jamie Raskin fangirl because Jamie Raskin, not only is he doing this, which immediately I'm going to be a fan of you. He also is part of the Free Thought Caucus, which helps 
promote free thought in the United States and protect secularism. And he was also the representative that sponsored the portion of um, this bill that went through the House of Representatives, and then there was a sister one that had to go through the Senate. But it was basically this bill that said that the United States is going to prioritize the repeal of uh, blasphemy and apostasy laws in its international policy, international foreign policy. So putting the promotion of free expression in our international foreign policy, making that a priority, that when we engage with countries, we are going to be focusing on a liaising with them to repeal apostasy and blasphemy laws. So obviously that is of the utmost importance to our global atheist republic community. And this is a major accomplishment that he did. We celebrated that when it happened a few years ago. And so I just want to give a shout out to Representative Jamie Raskin for continuing really amazing work and continuing the work of defending blasphemers. Because this is something that is not potentially politically popular, right? If there's a politician coming out and saying that I'm going to go protect someone that's accused of insulting the Prophet Muhammad, that could come at a political cost, potentially. If people don't understand the context of the case, they're saying, why are you protecting someone that's insulting the religion of a religious minority here in the United States? They could paint it in a totally bad light, right? But he's not worried about that. He's going to go and defend Mubarak Bala, this ex-Muslim atheist who is like an icon for Nigerian and African atheists. So um, huge thank you to Representative Raskin. Again, I would like everyone to go keep, pay attention to Mubarak Bala's case, hashtag free Mubarak Bala. And also if you're interested in supporting his case, Humanist International is continuing to raise money for his legal defense as they attempt to overpeal his 24 year conviction. So this is obviously a fight that isn't over, but there are still people who are in there fighting for Mubarak Bala and fighting for the rights of our Nigerian non-believing atheist brothers and sisters. Um, is there any way that you could get, maybe get in touch with representative Jamie Raskin? <clears throat> yeah. Because that would be so amazing if you could do that. Because you know, because this seemed like the best representative to for you to have a connection with, if it's possible. Because you've already like next week we're going to talk about you, Susanna do, doing something similar that has been successful. So if we could do this mm -hmm. as well, that would be great. Mm -hmm. I'm not part um, of his constituency, uh, but, but that doesn't still. necessarily always matter. But yeah, yeah. Do you think this man? You know has been through enough his family put him in mental institution and now he's rotting in jail and and math uh, mustafa is saying i think he's also battling cancer on top i have of never heard anything about cancer let me be clear i've never heard anything mm -hmm. about cancer i know that he does have hypertension and was denied medication for his hypertension which was a grave concern especially during the pandemic but i've never mm -hmm. heard anything about cancer and tema is saying do you Tema's automatically get immunity in Nigeria if you're no. adopted by a U.S. citizen. Let me be clear. This is not a literal adoption, right? This is not like you're my son. This is like a political yeah. adoption, basically meaning like I'm going to take on your case. It's symbolic. It's symbolic. It's, suppo it's supposed to bring a lot of attention to the case. That's what it does. So that's the, so it doesn't change anything legally. Um, and that's what it is. Oh, D is saying Raskin has cancer. Raskin has cancer. I thought you were talking about... Um, oh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, wow. oh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Damn. Okay, damn. That's it. Okay. And right now, we're looking for video editors. Video editors would be working with me. Graphic designers. I think graphic designers would be working with Susie. Um, uh, grant research and writing assistant. They would be working with Susie team coordinator or volunteer applicant application managers they would be working with me english to persian translators they would be working with me voiceover narrators would be working with me high profile guest uh, finder and coordinator that would they would be working with me that position live event speaking opportunity hunter that would be working with susanna uh, news cur curator and writer that would be working with susanna Art team manager and payment coordinator. That's a position that we'd be working with Susanna. Financial coordinator and bookkeeper. That's a position that we'd be working with Susanna. A social media manager. That's a position that we'd be working with me. 
a Drupal web developer. That's another position that we're working with Susanna. And lastly, live stream co-host in the background, most likely, unless somebody is really good. Um, you know, that would be for maybe secular jihadist recording videos, or if they speak Persian for maybe for Persian, uh, the show that would be working with me again, the link to the application for volunteers is in the description and also in the live stream. Um, so if you want to join our team as a volunteer, please consider doing so.